Good day everyone. My name is Tilvin and I'll be uh, I'll be explaining about uh, radiation today. So I'll be covering the topic uh, I'll be covering the subtopic of 7.1, 7.2 and 7.3. So we go to 7.1 now, which is the phenomenon of radiation. So um, radiation differs from conduction and convection heat transfer mechanism in the sense that uh, it does not uh, require the presence of a material medium to occur. Um, energy transfer by radiation occurs at the speed of light and suffers no attenuation in the cube. Radiation can occur between two bodies separated by a medium colder than both bodies. Uh, according to Maxwell theory, energy transfer takes place via electromagnetic wave in radiation. Uh, electromagnetic, this electromagnetic wave transport energy like other waves and travel at the speed of light. So as you can see here, we have a formula which is uh, lambda is equal to C over V, whereby lambda is the wavelength, C is the speed of light, V is the uh, frequency. Uh, v is cal uh, calculated in hertz, uh, lambda in mu m. Uh, C is the speed of light, where C in uh, the speed of light in vacuum is is calculated, uh, calculated as 2.99 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Uh, over here, we note that uh, the frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. Uh, okay. Then the speed of light in the medium is related to the speed of light in vacuum. So we see here C is equal to C0 over N, where N is the index of refraction of the medium. Of the medium. Um, N has a value. So, for example, n is equal to 1 for air and n is equal to 1.5 for water. Okay, so here we have the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. You can see this, uh, there's a graph here where we have the uh, wavelength in meters and frequency in meters, as I said. Uh, over this side, we have the non ionizing radiation, and over here, we have the ionizing radiation. So for the ionizing radiation, they have the uh, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. Uh, for the non-ionizing ones, we have long wave, medium wave, short wave, and so on. So we can see, okay. So we see here, uh, electromagnetic radiation covers a wide range of wavelengths from 10 to the power of minus 10 uh, mu m for cosmic rays to 10 to the power of 10 mu m for electrical power waves. So from the figure we see above, you can see that the thermal, thermal radiation wave is a narrow band on the electromagnetic wave spectrum, and uh, the thermal radiation emission is a direct result of vibrational and rotational motion of molecules, atoms, and electrons of the substance. Uh, temperature is a measure of these activities. Thus, uh, the rate of thermal radiation emission increases with increasing temperature. Uh, note that the radiation characteristics of the surfaces can be changed completely by applying thin layer of uh, coating on them. Uh, now we look into 7.2, which is the radiation properties. Uh, a black body can serve as a convenient reference in describing the emission and absorption characteristics of the surface. So we can do emission 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 here. So, emissivity of a surface is defined as the ratio of radiation emitted by the surface to the radiation emitted by a black body at the same temperature. Thus, the uh, emissivity, uh, we have the symbol E here, uh, this is symbol e here is between 0 and 1. The uh, emissivity, emissivity is a measure of how closely a surface approximates black body. So, we know that the uh, emissivity of a black body is equal to 1. The emissivity of a surface is not constant. It is a function of temperature of the surface and wavelength and the direction of the emitted radiation. So here we have E, uh, the bracket we have temperature, lambda and theta. Uh, theta is the angle between the direction and the normal of the surface. Okay, uh, so here uh, we have some formulas, so we look into the formulas now. Uh, the total emissivity of a surface is the average emissivity of a surface over all direction wavelengths. 
So NPC is of the surface at surface temperature is equal to E P over E B C is equal to E P over sigma C to the power of four. So simplify this this for this equation is equal to E P is equal to E P sigma C to the power of four. Then we have the spectral emissivity is defined in a similar manner as well. That is, we have E lambda C is equal to E lambda C over E B lambda C, where uh, E lambda C is the spectral emissive power of the rail surface. As shown, the radiation emission from a rail surface differs from the plant distribution. Okay, over here we have a comparison of the energy power of a rail surface and a black body. So you can see there's two two uh, two graphs. The one with the higher peak shows it's a black body energy power at a certain temperature, and the one with the lower peak is a rail surface at the same temperature. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, they are at the same temperature, but the graph differ. So to make calculations uh, easier, we define the following approximation. We have uh, two surfaces, which is the diffuse surface and the base surface. So the diffuse surface is a surface which is properties are independent of direction, and the gray surface is a surface which its properties are independent of wavelength. So for the emissivity of a gray diffuse surface, is a total emissivity of Simply total emissivity of the surface. A gray surface should emit as much as radiation as the real surface is present at the same temperature. Over here we have another formula where E C is equal to uh, integration of zero to infinity. Then we have E uh, lambda T E B lambda C C lambda over Sigma t to the power of four. So we we'll look into seven point three. Now with this black body and gray body. So the black body is defined as a body that absorbs all radiation that falls on its surface and it absorbs everything. So the actual black body doesn't exist in nature, though its characteristics are approximated by a hole in a box filled with highly absorptive material. The emission spectrum of such a black body was first fully described by Max Planck. A uh, black body is a hypothetical body that completely absorbs all wavelengths of thermal radiation incident on it. Such bodies they do not reflect light and therefore they appear black. Their temperature are low enough so not to self luminous. So all black bodies heated to give a temperature emit thermal radiation and. Uh, the radiation energy per unit time from a black body is proportional to the fourth power of the absolute temperature can be expressed with Stefan Boltzmann law. So we'll look into Stefan Boltzmann law in a while. So over here we have a Q is equal to sigma t to the power of A, where this Q is equal to this heat transfer per unit time and uh, sigma is equal to 5.6703 times 10 to the power of 98. So this is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So we'll be using this more in the in our equation. And C is the absolute temperature in Kelvin, and A is the area of emitting body. Uh, we are uh, the, this Stefan Boltzmann constant can be also uh, written in empirical units, but we are using uh, the 5.6703 times 10 to the power of 96. And uh, we look into gray bodies and emissivity coefficients now. As you can see here, this is uh, the image of how a gray body would look like. So, for objects other than ideal black bodies, uh, or like gray bodies, the Stefan Boltzmann law can be expressed as Q is equal to E sigma T to the power of 4A, where E is equal to emissivity coefficient of the object. Uh, it's one for the black bodies as I mentioned earlier. And okay, as you can see here in this, in this picture here, uh, for the gray body, the incident radiation, which is the incident radiation, or we can call it irradiation, uh, is partly reflected. 
is partly reflected, uh, absorbed or transmitted. So you can see this is uh, reflected, uh, partly reflected, absorbed, and this is transmitted when it is a body. And now finally, we we'll just need to do an example just to uh, show you all an uh, example. So what we have here is a cylindrical shape shown here. The uh, radius of the point is uh, 2 meters, the height is uh, 2 meters. And uh, they have three temperatures, uh, maybe the top, top temperature here is 700 Kelvin, the bottom temperature is 500 Kelvin, and the temperature at the base of the sides are 1400 Kelvin. Okay, so uh, what we have to find here is uh, the net rate of radiation heat transfer to or from the top surface during steady operation. So the first step is we write down the formula. Okay, the uh, formula would be Q dot is equal to A1 F12 sigma C1 to the power of 4 minus C2 to the power of 4. So bracket plus A1 F12 sigma times C1 to the power of 4 minus C3 to the power of 4. Okay, so that to find the, the area, we use the formula pi r square. So pi r square, you know the radius is 2 2 2. So we will get the area as 12.57 meters square. From the figure, the wave factor between the two coaxial values is uh, for L over R1 is 1 and R2 over L is equal to 1 also. So the wave factor between the base and top surface of cylinder becomes F12 is equal to 0 0.38. Since we know that the base is flat, so F11 is equal to 0. Uh, the summation rule that we all know is f11 plus f12 plus f12 must be plus a value of 1. Since uh, we already know what f12 is, so to find f13, we just need to take 1 minus 0 0.38, we will get 0 0.62. So uh, the heat transfer rate, we bring down the formula, with this formula we bring down again, and then we substitute the values that we already find, which is Area 12.57, uh, F13 we will define F13 is 0 0.62. Uh, we are, we know what is C1 700, C2 is equal to 500, C3 is equal to 1400. Uh, F12 we know is uh, 0 0.38. Uh, area we have already. So when you substitute all the values inside, you will get negative 1543 kilowatt. So uh, here, do not worry. Uh, the negative uh, value actually represents the heat radiation which is occurred from the uh, base to the top surface, so it's going in the opposite, so it's going in the negative direction. So the net uh, rate, uh, rate heat radiation we get is 1543 kilowatts. So this is the final answer for this question. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you. Assalamualaikum and good day. My name is Syed Abdul Afiq bin Wansikawi. Uh, I'm going to cover on the radiation heat transfer on 7.4, 7.5 and 7.6. Okay, firstly, 7.4, spectral and directional dependence. Okay, uh, sometimes it is necessary to consider the variation of radiation with wavelength as well as direction and to express quantities at a certain wavelength lambda. We are using lambda, this one. Such quantities are referred to as spectral quantities to draw attention to wavelength dependence. The modifier spectral is used to indicate at a given wavelength. Okay, next, the spectral intensity for emit radiation, I lambda at E, can be defined as the rate at which radiation energy dq dot E is emit at the wavelength lambda in the theta and the rho direction per unit area normal to this direction per unit solid angle about this direction and it can be expressed as this formula i lambda at e equal to d q dot e over d a cos theta d omega dot d lambda 
Okay, uh, the most elemental emissivity of the surface at a given temperature is the spectral directional emissivity, which is defined as the ratio of the intensity of radiation emitted by the surface at a specified wavelength in a specified direction to the intensity of radiation emitted by a black body at the same temperature. That is, this one, the, the formula. Okay, uh, where the subscripts lambda and theta, this one, lambda and theta are used to designate spectral and directional quantities, respectively. Okay, uh, the total directional emissivity is defined in a like manner by using total intensities as this formula, IE over IB. Uh, in practice, it is usually more convenient to work with radiation properties, average over all direction, called hemispherical properties. That is our next topic, 7.5, total hemispherical property. Uh, the integral of the rate of radiation and energy emitted at a specified wavelength per unit surface area over the entire hemisphere is spectral emissive power. The spectral hemispherical emissivity can be expressed as this formula E lambda. Note that the emissivity of a surface at a given wavelength can be different at different temperatures since the spectral distribution of emit radiation change with temperature. Uh, the total hemispherical emissivity is defined in terms of the radiation energy emit over all wavelengths in all direction as this formula T E T over E B T temperature T is for temperature therefore the total hemispherical emissivity or simply the average emissivity of a surface at a given temperature temperature represent the ratio of the total radiation energy emit by the surface to the radiation emit by a black body of the same surface area at the same temperature. Okay, next is radiation view factor 7.6. Uh, in this chapter, we will consider radiation exchange between diffuse surface only. Diffuse surface only and thus the term view factor will simply mean diffuse view factor. To account for the effect of orientation on radiation heat transfer between two surfaces, a new parameter has been defined called the view factor, which is purely geometric quantity and is independent of the surface properties and temperature. It is also called the shape factor, configuration factor, and angle factor. As you can see from this figure, two of one surface 1, surface 2, surface 3 radiation heat exchange between surface depends on the orientation of the surface this one surface 1, surface 2 ok, uh, the view factor from surface I to surface J is denoted by Fi to J or just Fij and is defined as this formula Fij, the fraction of radiation leaving surface I ok, to develop a general expression for the view factor ok Firstly, is consider two differential surface DA1, DA2, this one, from figure 2 of 2. On two arbitrary oriented on surface A1 and A2. The distance between DA1 and DA2 is R. This one, R. The angle between the normal of surface are theta1, theta2. Surface 1 emits and reflects radiation diffusely in all directions with a constant intensity and solid angle subtend by DA2 when viewed by DA1 is D omega 2 1 this one in the middle of this okay the rate at which radiation leaves DA1 is in the direction of theta 1 is this one cos theta 1 DA1 
noting that d omega to 1 is equal to da2 cos theta2 over r2. The quotient of the radiation that strikes da2 strikes da2 is this formula. I cos theta da1 d omega 2 1. So d omega 2 1 noting that d omega 2 1 is d a2 cos theta 2 over r2. Okay, uh, these are the formula for f a1 to a2. Uh, this one is f a2 to a1. So, a1 to a2, a2 to a1. Okay, uh, finally, uh, this is the view factor expression for some common geometries of finite size. First one is a line parallel a rectangle, of shell parallel disc, perpendicular rectangles with common edge. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Siti Noelida Pintiraman, with treat number CD17729. Would like to present about 7.7 .7 radiation exchange between surfaces and 7.8 radiation resistance network okay. or 7.7 .7 radiation exchange between surfaces. Okay, the analysis of radiation exchange between surfaces is complicated because of reflection. This can be simplified when surfaces are assumed to be black surfaces. The net radiation between two surfaces can be expressed as this formula. Yes. Then, uh, applying reciprocity A1, F12 equal to A2, F21 yield. Okay. Can, then, formula will be like this. Okay. Consider an enclosure consisting of N, black surface maintained at specific temperature. For its surface I, we can write like this formula. Okay. U dot I equal this formula. Using the sign convection, a negative heat transfer rate indicate that the radiation heat transfer is to surface I, which is a uh, heat gain. Now, we can extend this analysis uh, to black to non-black surfaces, it is common common to assume that the surface um, are opaque, diffuse, and gray. Gray. Uh, also, surfaces are considered to be isothermal. Also, the fluid inside the cavity is not participating in the radiation. Okay, radiosivity J is the total radiation energy streaming from a surface per unit area. Per unit time, it is the summation of the reflection and the emitted radiation. Okay, for the for a surface I that is gray and opaque, uh, which is uh, equal to epsilon I equal to alpha I and alpha I uh, plus uh, density I equal to one. The radiosivity can be expressed as this formula. For a black body and this Ji, okay. Not that the radiosivity of a uh, of a black body is equal to its emissive power using an energy balance. The net rate of radiation heat transfer from a surface I of surface area A I can be expressed as this formula. You can see this formula. Then, okay, for 7.8 radiation resistor network, okay, okay, as you can see, uh, in electrical analogy to Ohm's law, a uh, thermal resistor can be, uh, can be defined as this formula, then we, uh, transform into Ohm's law resistor, which is this Ri. Okay. Where Ri is called the surface resistance to the radiation. Okay, uh, figure twelve ten show surface resistance to radiation. Okay, 
not that the surface resistance to radiation for a black body is zero. Okay, for insulated or adiabatic surfaces, the net heat transfer through them is zero. In this case, the surface is called re-radiating surface. There is no net heat transfer to re-radiating re surface. Okay. Then we move to the next, which is the net radiation between two surfaces. Consider two diffuse, gray and opaque surfaces for arbitrary shape maintained at uniform temperatures. The net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface I to surface J can be expressed to this formula and applying reciprocity we can like this okay in analogy with ohm's law a resistor can be defined as this formula we shown uh, at the first 7.8 okay where r i j is called the space resistance to radiation okay as you can see figure 12 uh, 11 Shown the figure shown electrical network surface and space resistance. Okay, shown I there's a Q dot IJ, J, EBI, EBJ. Okay, in N, in N, N surface enclosures, the conservative of energy principle required that the net heat transfer. From net, sorry, uh, the net heat transfer from the surface I is to be equal to the sum of the net heat transfer from I to each of the end surface of the angles. Okay, which is this formula show. Okay, we have already derived the uh, relationship for the net radiation from the surface. This. Okay, combining these two relationship, you can get this final formula. Okay. Okay. Thank you.